Karn with the Air Zoo. I'm one of the science educators here, and I have a question for you. What does the Statue of Liberty have to do with the planet Mars? Rust. They're both rusty. Right, let's dig into that a little bit more. Okay, first of all, have you seen rust before? Have you ever seen rust? A lot of you, especially if you live in Michigan, your car can tend to get rusty because of the salt that the roads are treated with in the winter. I have here on my spoon a piece of rust. So this spoon is made out of steel, and steel is something that has iron in it. You notice how most of the spoon is coated with this enamel, but in this spot where the enamel has worn off, rust has formed. And rust is what happens when iron is exposed to air, the oxygen in the air, and water really speeds it up quite a bit, and salty water even more. And when rust happens, it turns this really strong material into something kind of red and crumbly. And rust is what Mars and the Statue of Liberty have in common. Okay, technically speaking, Mars is a planet that has a bunch of rusty dust on it. It's iron oxide on the surface of the planet that gives Mars its beautiful red color, and it's actually a really cool science mystery because currently scientists aren't quite clear how the iron oxide formed on the surface of Mars because Mars does not have a lot of oxygen in its atmosphere and it doesn't have liquid water its water is frozen. So that's really something that scientists are trying to understand, but it does have this beautiful iron oxide on the surface of it. And let's talk about the Statue of Liberty now. Okay, so the Statue of Liberty, originally about 150 years ago, it wasn't this blue green color that it was, that it is now. It was actually the color of shiny new copper like this penny. What happened though is some really interesting chemistry. So initially, copper, when it's exposed to oxygen, will also do something that's sort of like rust. And I'm using air quotes here because it's not really technically rust. Um, that only refers to iron, but it reacts with the oxygen to turn it this dull brown color. And with, in the case of the Statue of Liberty, there was additional chemistry that happened. So first it turned from the beautiful shiny color of a new penny to this sort of dull penny color. And then because of pollution, um, the sulfur in the pollution in New York um, combined with water to make sulfuric acid and additional chemistry happened to form this beautiful green color. So really both the planet Mars and the Statue of Liberty owe their color to a reaction that we'll call rust. All right. Would you like to do a little bit more with some penny chemistry? I have some really cool reactions that we can do. All right, so here, here's my shiny new penny. I have some dull looking pennies. They are oxidized, just like that first color reaction that happened with the Statue of Liberty. And I can turn them shiny pretty again with just two very common household Compound. So I have some white vinegar here and I have some salt and I've mixed a quarter cup of the vinegar with about a teaspoon of salt in this dish here and we're going to do some cool chemistry. All right, look what happens when I dip my penny in just for a couple seconds. You can already see it's getting cleaner. I'm going to Drop a whole bunch in so you can see it happening. Notice the color before. And almost immediately, they start brightening. I'll stir it up a little bit. And you'll see this immediate reaction. And I will actually stop the reaction by taking the penny out of the vinegar solution and dipping it in my water. So what is happening is the vinegar is made of acetic acid and that acid can dissolve the copper oxide coating on the penny. The salt helps speed the reaction up quite a bit. 
and you're basically dissolving the copper oxide and leaving the shiny penny um, underneath. And again, I'm stopping your action by putting it in some water. All right, so that is something you can do with vinegar and salt, but did you know there's actually a lot of things probably in your cupboard at home that also have acid and salt in them. For example, try this experiment with some hot sauce or with ketchup or salsa. Can you think of anything else that's acidic that you might have at home? What about lemons or some kind of carbonated pop? All of those things have acid in them and you could speed up the reaction a little bit more if you make sure they have salt as well. So try that out and see if you can get some pennies clean and turn on this beautiful shiny color again. That's not it. That's not the only penny chemistry that you can do with just household chemicals. So if you, for example, left these pennies in this salty vinegar for about five minutes, and instead of dunking them off and rinsing them and stopping the reaction with water, if you left them in for five minutes and then fished them out and put them on a paper towel without rinsing them or rubbing them or anything, you get that green color, that verdigris, that looks a little bit like the Statue of Liberty. What's happening there is the acetic acid, that vinegar residue that's left on the penny, um, it's reacting further with air to form something called copper carbonate. And there are a lot of minerals in nature that have copper salts in them. And here I actually have an example of one of the copper carbonate compounds. This is malachite. It's been polished up to be turned into jewelry. But there's a lot of other minerals that have this beautiful green color because of um, the presence of copper in combination with other things. So you can turn your pennies green this way. That's the second kind of color change, cool chemistry reaction you can do. There is a third reaction that's really amazing. Okay, so what I did in this third reaction is I cleaned about 10 pennies in, um, in my salty vinegar. I left them in for about five minutes, and then I put them in my bath of water, and then what I wanted left was that salty vinegar solution that now has copper just floating around in it. And I took something here, I took a, a steel nail, and I left it in that solution for about an hour. And do you notice the part that was submerged in the liquid now has a coating of copper on it? Isn't that cool? It's a little subtle. It will be more dramatic if we leave it in longer. Eventually, all the copper will kind of get deposited and the reaction won't happen any further, but that's a really cool kind of copper plating that you can do with your, um, the remnants of your, your penny cleaning activity. I also tried it with a um, stainless steel washer. So here is the washer as it was brand new. It's kind of shiny. I used my, my solution that had clean pennies in. And now, let me fish this out so you can see it. You see the color difference? Look at how there's a thin copper coating on that washer. For that reaction to work, what you need to keep in mind is you do need something that is steel. Um, some things that are shiny and metal are zinc, and that reaction won't happen the same way because what is happening to cause the copper to deposit the, the salty vinegar dissolves a little bit of the iron that's in the steel, and it leaves the surface of the, the nail um, with a slight negative charge. The copper that's floating around from cleaning pennies is positively charged, and so it's attracted onto the steel, and it makes that thin coating. Isn't that cool? I think that's, that's a really neat reaction to try. All right, so now you know there's a couple really cool pen, penny chemistry actions you can try. And hopefully you have an appreciation for the cosmic chemistry that connects all of us from the Statue of Liberty to the planet Mars. Um, enjoy.